And I thought it was interesting that Daniel spoke, and Miss Audrey gave this word about Absalom sitting at the gate. And remember, he kind of drew the people away from David and from the kingship that, that God wanted to bestow. And I thought that was so interesting because I feel like part of the message tonight is actually on that without knowing it. Like I didn't have that idea in my mind that that's what I was kind of going to preach on. I'm not going to preach on it, but you'll see the kind of the sub subtle flow of it. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God, and we are. So that first word is behold, is, is, is look, see, it's behold, look into, like, like uh, you would behold your wife, you know, on your wedding day. As you look deeply into her eyes, into her soul, probably before that, or, you know, your husband or your child, it's, you're looking deeply into it, you're searching it out, you're finding the depth of that person. And we are called as, as, as children of God to behold the love of God. And this is a hard thing to do because there's a lot of things in our life that pulls our eyes away from our ability to behold. Like, for example, cell phones. How much we're looking down at our cell phones all the time throughout the week? Just because it's easy. It's a lot easier when you enter the city to see a guy sitting at the gate saying, here... I am to listen to you. And that's a lot, it's a lot easier to pick up that cell phone and, and look at Facebook or Instagram or turn on the TV. And I realized that in Brazil, God had been speaking to me about Joshua, all of we as believers have these little defenses that we have that sit at our gates. And I'm, not, I'm just using the verbiage from tonight because I'm more preaching off the cuff. That sit at the gates and, and uh, pull us away from the true identity of our kingship. It can be religion. It can be, God, I'm forsaking a real relationship with you because of Facebook, because of TV, because of family, because of work, because of whatever it may be. It pulls us away. We can even, well, God, I'm not going to really press into knowing you as my father. I'm just going to read the scriptures for five hours today. Or I'm going to act like I'm doing something that is spiritual when it's really not spiritual. And I saw that in my life in Brazil. God kept on convicting me. He said, Joshua, why aren't you receiving? Is because I had my eyes closed. Because I really wasn't beholding my father. I really wasn't beholding love. So I was using something as an interme intermediary between me and love. Kind of like Absalom. He was, he was acting as an intermediary between him and David, or between the people and David. And he was able to win their hearts away. And I realized how much we use things in our life before we actually enter into the depth of relationship or the ability to behold the true love of Father. Because we think of our children, and we even if you don't have children, you've seen a wholesome family show on TV that should show the relationship between child and mother or child and father. And you think, man, that, that father really loves his kid because he's sitting out there at baseball practice and he's throwing the balls to him and he's encouraging them. He's not belittling them. You know, but how honestly, honest, if we we're honest with ourselves, how much of our relationship with God is that real? That we really feel our Father sitting out there daily with us, encouraging us as we try to swing and hit the ball. You know, as we go to work, as we go in family, as we go and do ministry, whatever it may be, how much of a reality of, are we able to behold God's love? That's what John's saying. Even the whole book of John is really on love here. First John, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. I mean, get that. The Father of the universe is calling His children His children. Do you almost feel like we're really inheriting that, that place with Him? I mean, being brutally honest. I mean, guys, you know, I don't know. We've been Christians for a long time. Some of us, you know, our whole lives. Some of us not. It doesn't matter. 
What matters is that we're trying to step further into intimacy with Father. Step further into intimacy with the Son. Step further into intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And this is a hard thing to do. You know, throughout the trip, I, I preached on Zechariah and going to God and getting clean with the body and the blood. And it was really good. I preached on how to use your angels to, to serve throughout the kingdom. I preached on... Uh, I preached on the Song of Psalm and how that intimacy goes back and forth, back and forth between us and God, us and God, us and God, and we call out to Him. I preached on, um, I preached on, you are the good and perfect gift coming down from the Father of lights in James. You know, these are great messages and the people really, really loved them. But a lot of times I was seated at a table and I had this little defense up. And you can call it maybe a hardness. You can, I, think it, I can think the best word is resistance. And I want us to check our hearts on the resistances we have, the intermediaries we have before we enter into the love of God. Because God is sitting here saying, guys, I want you to behold my love. Behold the love of me. He chose us. It wasn't by our strength that we did it. It was by His Spirit that we became children of the Most High God. In John chapter 1, not by blood. You know, not by... Uh, oh man, I just lost it. But anyway, there's a list in chapter 1 where not by, but by Him. I, I, thought it was so, I thought it was so powerful as I was sitting there. I was sitting across from this young lady and she was telling me about some things. And I mentioned the cloud of witness to her. And immediately, she goes on the defense, and I go on the defense. And I don't even recognize it. And Josh is sitting there smiling, and this other lady who's sitting there is kind of like getting bored out of her mind. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what's going on, but I don't know what to do because I'm already in this way of trying to give Scripture and show her this idea of encountering the cloud of witness. And I realize afterwards as I was in prayer that I was really convicted because it was more about proving something. It was more about being in that resistance, showing that I knew something rather than being what God had called me to be in that moment, which is really love. See, the ways of God is beautiful is that He comes, he comes to the... He can come as the most brilliant light, but then He can come as the most... You know, have on the most ugly garments or the most ugly things and say, I'm clothing myself in humility to come to you. You know, in our deepest, darkest periods. He, he does them both. He, he loves us so much that he does them both. And I think it's it's hard for me to, it's hard for me, and in this trip, I, it was so different because it was so deep, it was so glor. It was so much filled with glory and, you know, the praises of the pastors. And some of Pastor Jose said, man, guys, to me and Josh, he said, even if you just came and preached this message, your trip would have been enough. That would have been enough to hear that for a 30 minute message tops. I, we both preached each. And he said, if y'all would have just came and preached this, it would have been enough. I mean, to hear that. Is, is amazing for me because it, I'm able to say thank you Father for giving me something that's amazing and take it back to Him. But at the same time I, I realized that most of the time I always had this resistance that I really wasn't beholding the love of my Father. After praying more and more about it he says Joshua the reason why you're resisting is not to prove to other people. You're not proving to other people. You're trying to prove to yourself. You're trying to make yourself believe. Not that you know up here. Because you have that. You've had those experiences. But you're trying to prove to yourself still that you're somebody. And when you're doing that, it's, it's plainly because you're not beholding love. Love, when you're loved by God of the universe, what do you have to prove? What do you have to... What do you have to show to people? This is what he says. He says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God, and we are. 
Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. He puts that last part of that scripture in there to say, hey guys, the world's not going to know you because it doesn't know Him. So your expectation of the world knowing you is misplaced. But yet we still try to convince the world inside of us who we truly are, rather than beholding love. God is love. His whole entire being is love. You know, the systems that we use, the, our abilities to quote Scripture, I'm going to do it in the Christian part now because that's what we are. We're going to blow up some of our religious stuff that we do. Our, our abilities to quote Scripture to people doesn't matter. When did God ever come to you and quote scripture to you to bring him to himself? He didn't. He said, I love you, son. He said, my goodness draws repentance. He didn't sit there and, and lambast you. He didn't sit there and argue 15 points. No, he came to you and he gave you the Holy Spirit and witnessed inside of you and you said, oh, I get it now. I get it, Dad. Look at that simplicity of love as it, as it touches upon our hearts. Oh, I wish that I would have listened more. During the trip as I met people, as I talked with people, my outlook began to change. I wasn't just trying merely to share a revelation that was good. I was just trying to be love. I was trying to behold love. I, I got stuck. My plane, they canceled my flight and I was at the hotel or they, they booked me in this hotel and uh, this is nice. It was like a resort hotel for the night. It was, it was pretty nice for Brazilian standards. I mean, it was nice to me. And of course, I'm the only English speaking guy there. Josh just flew on to his next place and God, I'm like, God, where in the, you know, let me have somebody I can talk to or something. And there was this girl sitting across the aisle and he said, talk to her. She knows English. And I thought, man, there's no way. So, but I got up and said, God, you know what, I'm going to try. So I started and I talked to her. And she's actually coming up to Kentucky to do a little camp with some kids for three months or so or whatever. And I began talking to her and I said, hey, can you help me? And I just began to, I just began to talk to her just normal. It wasn't necessarily religious or anything. It was just normal. Oh, where's my hat? Bro, bring me my hat. i got to use that. Sunday. It is uh, it's Mission Sunday. So, oh, the reason why I'm preaching in shorts and shirts is because one of my bags is being flown here, and it has all my nice pants in it, and it's a billion degrees outside, and I don't wear a suit. So, there's my explanation on that, guys. So, this is my Brazilian hat, because I don't have any of my Brazilian shirts or anything, and it's Mission Sunday, first weekend of every month, if you didn't know that. So, anyway... So I, I asked her, you know, hey, can you help me? She's like, yes, get to the desk. And the guy ends up speaking English. And so that just looked like an idiot at that point. But then I thought, you know what, God, I'm just going to keep on keeping on because I feel like this is what you're saying. I didn't really have understanding necessarily. But I said, hey, would you like to eat dinner with me? And so we went down in the lobby and we sat down and began having dinner. And, you know, this girl's kind of cute and I'm kind of nervous because I don't really know what to talk about. God said, just be love, Josh. Be yourself. Be yourself. And this was the message. And it wasn't like, I had to, when I noticed I was speaking to her, I wasn't trying to prove anything to her. I was just having a conversation with her. What are you up to? What are you doing? What do you like? You know, how old are you? And she would ask me questions. And then she began to inquire of spiritual things because she read my hat. My hat means... The king's son or king's sons. Uh, man, I just tried to, I just lost how to say it. Fiu du he. Fiu du he. It means son of king or the king's son. And she asked, you know, why do you have that hat? And I was able to tell her about what Jesus had done on the trip. And I didn't necessarily preach at her. I just, just show love. Just show love. And it wasn't like, and for me, if you know anything about Daniel and I or our family, not necessarily on my mom's side, but more on my dad's side, 
We are very strong and proud when it comes to beautiful women. And I'm being very personal here, guys, because I'm trying to show you something here. So please, I'm nervous sharing this. But we're very strong and, we, and we're able to put on a, 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 a confidence that's not of God when it comes to beautiful women like, hey man, we're amazing. And that confidence, came, it was good in the past because it kind of shielded us. But now God is saying, no, it's not coming out of beholding my love. It's not coming out of who you truly are, Joshua. And I realized this, that during the trip so many times that little by little as I would acknowledge my resistances that I had to beholding love in every situation, because no matter what situation you're in, you can always behold love. A lot of us think, man, while well, I'm in this torment, like in my bags, you know, it's like, Man, I lost all this coffee I brought over. I lost my nice suitcase that my mom got me, and I love that suitcase. Oh, man, I lost all my nice pants. My pants that Daniel gave me, my, what do you call those, linen pants that are so cool, so fresh. I love them. You know, I lost all my nice clothes, or the kinds that fit me because of gaining a little bit of weight here recently, you know, that are nice. And it's like I can choose to be frustrated, or I can say, God, where is your love here? Where is your love in the situation? Where is your love as the brothers? You know, where, where is the love from the sisters? And I realized that I was being encouraged in God in the trip. But it wasn't just like heavenly uh, glory between me and Him. Because God's true love isn't just between you and God. You may be a time where it's just you and God, but... God never continues in just you and God. It's you, God, and your brother and sister. It's you, God, and someone else. That's another religious BS that we, that we throw out there in front of people. Of, oh, yeah, me and God have this great relationship. I know God. Well, if you're going to love God, it says you're going to love your brother. Love is not saying hello to them. Love is having a relationship with them and talking to them and knowing their depths. Love is supporting them when they're hurting or when they're not hurting, just doing something different. Love is honor. Love is, love is, hey, I'm really proud of you, bro. Or, hey, I'm really proud of you, sister. Or, hey, whatever it is, I'm there helping you. And I realized throughout the trip, even on the plane ride home, there was these two people sitting next to me who both spoke English. And again, you know, one was really pretty girl and this other one was just a guy. And it's like I realized, God, what is going on here? Because I'm not trying to hit on her one and be all that kind of strong confidence dude. And two, I'm not trying to be Mr. Spiritual here either. I'm just being who I feel like I'm supposed to be. And he says, Joshua, if you pay attention to who you truly are, you will behold who I truly am. Remember a long time ago I said, if you discover your true self, you'll, discover, you'll start discovering who God truly is because he's formed you and created you, put spirit in you, you know, in the, in, in the womb. He has a destiny, and I realized, God, I can sit here and have these conversations, and I don't have to argue with them. I don't have to say, you know, what is your beliefs? And I don't do it just outright, ever. But I just, you know, I can kind of, you know, poke, poke, stab. You know, you all ever get those people who can do that and can just hit them with the knife? It's like, hi, here's that knife. I can get you. I can poke a hole in your theory. Now you're a loser and you can admit it. You know, kind of thing. You know, that's a point of pride, but that's not godly. So anyway, back to the story. So throughout the trip, I felt God just continue and continue and continue and continue to say, Joshua, if you're really beholding love as you are my child, then you can really show love and walk in who I've called you to be. And that's so hard. And, and these things that are like Absalom that stand at our gate and, and, and persuade us when we have a problem. Because when we have problems, that's when our stress hits. That's when we choose to go back to whatever it is in our lives that makes us feel comfortable that it's easy to get to. You know, it's, I talked on ask, seek, and knock. You know, it's a lot to knock on Father's door before he answers sometimes. You know, it's a, it's a lot. That's why it's important to, to get to know love himself. 
Because when love maybe doesn't answer right away, you'll have a way of God that will continue to say, hey, love's not going to lead me down a wrong path. True love isn't going to lead me down a wrong path. It says the world does not know us because it did not know him. I think it's interesting that it says the world does not know us because it does not know him. In John chapter 1, it says, The life is the light of men. One of my favorite verses. And it came back to me as I was down there. And he said, Joshua, if you really are beholding my love, then you're going to behold my life. Then it will act as a light. And the world won't notice you. It will think you're crazy. And a lot of us are not really free. We, we hold ourselves in prisons because we don't want to seem crazy. And I realized that God is pretty freaking crazy, guys. He blows stuff up all the time. I mean, he separated all the, all the people at the Tower of Babel and spread them out and gave them all different languages. I mean, all those families just <sighs> scattered them. Hey, you speak Gibraltar over there and you speak Spanish over there or whatever. You know, he does crazy stuff. Oh, I'm going to swallow all the Egyptians in this Red Sea. Oh, I'm going to kill all these people in this city. Oh, I'm going to... Whatever he does, he just does crazy stuff after crazy stuff to our minds. Because he's trying to get us to see love. He's trying to get us to go beyond ourselves into the realm of love. Into the realm of who we truly are. So, it's a rather simple message. It's a rather simple report that a lot of great things happen. A lot of glory stuff happened. I mean, we engaged the angel of Casa de Jesus. We did different stuff with a couple different people who had never engaged. They come up and they say, they come up and they say to us, man, you guys, I really appreciate that. I saw you covered in fire and flames. And man, so these people are like, I don't understand you, you know. But it's like you're able to give love, but at the same time I realize, God, there's some things I need to repent of. And I need to repent of these resistances that I have within myself these beliefs that I hold, these ways of, of Absalom. I need to let... It's interesting. Wasn't it Absalom who was caught in the tree with his hair? Hair is a sign of glory. And we think these ways are show glory, show magnificence, show marvelous, show kingship, show whatever. It's interesting that he gets caught in his hair because it's, it's like a false glory. It's not really real. And I think God's wanting to show what are our indifferences in life. Why, why do we not honor one another? Why do we not pay attention? Why do we not behold the love of God purely with Him and then with each other? You know, even when I was sitting with worldly people, God said, you can see a part of love in them because I created them. Look into that love. Behold that love in them. Draw that out. Just carry my life. And I, I thought it was interesting that the first night I preached at Dursay's church, I preached on Zechariah and going up and getting the body and the blood and cleansing yourself and using the angel and stuff like that. And at the end of the service, if y'all remember, I had this Jesus hat. Right? Y'all remember the hat? You remember the hat? Yes. We remember the hat. Thank you. Gotta wake up. Wake up, thou that sleepest. So, Remember the hat. It was a favorite hat of mine. I really liked that hat. God said, give it away. Give it away. And I was like, are you sure, God? He's like, yeah, give it away. So I gave it away to this guy who was there. And I never saw him again the whole trip, which I thought was crazy because usually they come back pretty often in his church. And the next time we would go out and preach at Pastor Carlos's church, he has, Josh and I have these, these hats. Josh has faith in Portuguese. And mine says, Few do, do, uh, few. Yeah, I'll just say son of the king. There you go. In Portuguese, few do hey. Few, few you do hey. It's a few you do hey. Mm -hmm. And I realized there's a scripture that says the glory of God is to conceal a matter, the glory of a king is to search it out. So in your daily lives, when you sit across the table, you got to grow up and to be a king, and I do too. And I felt like God gave me this as a prophetic sign. I didn't really understand it. But I felt like God was saying, no, it's time to grow up into your kingship. It's time to enter into the city. Enter into it. Stop being 
taken away by all the absences in your life, all those things that resist me, all those things that you put in front of me, all your crap in your life, whatever it is, it be, may be religious, it may look good, you may be able to prove it out with 15 scriptures, whatever it may be, it has to come in intimacy with Him. It's a relationship with Him. And that's what's important. We, we serve a living God. There's not one good father who doesn't teach his kid how to play baseball or how to talk or how to do business. There is not. I didn't even have a great father and I still knew what a good father was. You know, that's an amazing concept. But yet we put God somewhere out there and we put us somewhere in here. And God constantly says throughout the scriptures, hey, I, one with you, that's my desire. Put on righteousness, put on the new man. All these things he keeps repeating because he wants you to behold the love that he has for you. I mean, get the, the love, the God of the universe wants to call you his child. And we say, no, I want to learn from Bilbo Baggins down the street or whatever you want to learn from. You know, it's, it's crazy. I'm talking to myself just as much as I'm talking to every one of you guys. I'll end with this point. We may have a gift. We may prophesy some pretty cool things over people. We may heal some people. We may walk in the Spirit sometimes and the glory may fall. And I understand that. Most of you Christians who have been there a long time I understand that. But if there's any place in your heart that doesn't behold His love and the love that He has, the Father has for His child, then we're seriously missing it. We're seriously missing it. The relationship God has destined for our hearts and for who we are. I mean, we seriously are. God takes so much joy in just having a relationship with you. It blows my mind. I think, God, I can be doing more things. I can go out saving souls and doing all kinds of stuff and make sure people don't go to hell. Da 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 da. He keeps saying, Joshua, I died to have a relationship with you. I didn't just die so you can go out and save a bunch of souls. I died to have a relationship with you. God died to have a relationship with you guys. I mean a legit relationship. Not just a fairy in the sky relationship where you pray to him and he may answer 50 years from now. No, I mean a legit relationship. A legit, legit, legit relationship. But those barriers have to come down. So this is what I want to do for ministry tonight. I just want us to come before the Lord um, and I like to get spirit, soul, body involved. So we're going to get spirit, soul, body involved. So as we engage Father and behold His love, behold what manner, how did you do that? God, you're so amazing. I'm so thankful. You know, one of the greatest things is thankfulness. Every time I just said thank you, Jesus, for His love, and it's just like, it was like a wound, and it just like opened up, and it was like, a big bear hug, just always enshrouded me, just in that thankfulness. And it wasn't just religious thankfulness, it was like I was sincerely thankful. And I called out, and, and it was just like I was able to bird love more every time. I just, I'm thankful for you, Dad. I'm thankful for you, Jesus. I'm thankful for you, Holy Spirit. So, what I want us to do, and what I feel like God is saying, He's saying, search your heart. What Absaloms are sitting at your gates that you're listening to that turn you away? They may be religious. And you need to blow that crap up. You do. They may not be religious. They may be totally secular and the worst, worst looking thing ever. It doesn't matter. It's all dirty in the eyes of God. It's all sin. It's all going to be burned up as wood and stone. But if you're tired, of not having that love in your day, of not engaging it with other people around you. And this is an opportunity that I'm going to give to you. And I want you, if you do it, and be serious about it, just don't. This I preached a message on freedom and love. And you can't have perfect love without freedom. One of Daniel's messages a long time ago. Don't do it because you feel like you have to. Really don't. There's no point in doing this. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help anybody here. You're just feeding into a system. Do it for real. Do it from your heart. God, now shut up. Let us shut our eyes. Father, we want to engage you. We want to behold your love. You know, no one knows that, that width and height and depth of your love, but you say your spirit searches you. 
searches the depth of you and shows us, shows us. So I just ask, Lord, that we just stand ready to enter the city of the living God. That we stand ready to enter into the city of the living God. That you speak to our hearts. We ask, Father, what is something that persuades us persuades us off. What are the Absaloms in our life, Father, that persuade us, Father, off of our course, off from entering into intimacy with you, O King of Kings and Lord of Lords? What persuades us off from beholding your love so we don't have to defend ourselves every day of every second? What persuades us, God? I'm tired of having a half-and-half half relationship with you or a three-quarters relationship or one-eighth relationship with you. God, I want to engage you in your fullness. I want to enter in, in, in who I am. I want to behold. I want to look deeply into, to know the mysteries of love. Not only for me. I want to know it for me. But I want to know it for my brothers and sisters around. I want to know it for, for anything in every situation that I can behold your glory. That I can behold you. So people just in mind, I just want you to, I hope that you're just seeking God as if there is anything. And if you don't have anything, that's okay. Just, just, I want, if you, if you want, just come step up here.